is authentic. Do you understand that? It is authentic and genuine. There is nothing authentic like the word. So we're going to get that into us, aren't we? So when we go to Ephesians, we're going to read. Yes. Nope, Ephesians. Ephesians 3.14. I'll do whatever he tells me to do. Are you ready? For this cause, we bow our knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the full family in heaven and earth is named that he may grant you according to his riches and glory that we'd be strengthened with his might by his spirit in our inner man and that Christ you may dwell in our hearts by faith that we would be rooted and grounded in love that we may able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. Ooh, and we would know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that we might be filled with all the fullness, fullness of God. Now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ask or think according to that power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Do you agree? We have an agreement. You may be seated. Well, what we're going to do here is look, stay right there in Ephesians. Would you do that? Stay right there. Ephesians, we'll go back to 2.6. We'll go back to Ephesians 2 and 6. Because we have to understand that we have the promises of God, but are we, are we walking in those promises, or are we trying to bring God down to our level of thinking? Then we will not have those miracles. We will not have what we're asking for if we try to bring him down. How do we try to bring him down sometimes? I'll be sharing that with you in a second here. In 2.6, what does it say there? And hath, what did he, where, where are we seated? We're seated in heavenly places together. Oh, he made us sit together in heavenly places. He did that in Christ Jesus. He did that. Now, in the Amplified, and he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, living, giving us joint seating. Joint seating. Is that believable? He's given us everything that he has. God has given us everything that Jesus came to show us. When you look at what you're supposed to be doing, look at Jesus. He was the son of God, is the son of God. He came to show us how to live and what to do. All right, we'll find out a little bit about him. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being born again in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. So now, when you look at that, go to 320. Go to 320. In 320 there, and I, I'm going to hit right to, now I'll stay in the, the King James. Now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. What power is working in you? Do, first of all, how many of you are born again? You're, you're, how come I don't see the hands way up here? Let the devil see. You don't want to mess with the devil. Either he'll take you down or you'll take him down. Are we ashamed of him? You know, I got I to say this here. When, when I move in worldly things, okay, all of a sudden I kind of, I don't know if I want to talk. I feel so guilty I did that, and now I should tell that person. Because guilt and condemnation, and God says in Romans, there's no guilt and condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. He has buried that into the deepest of oceans. But we want to close the door to that because the devil looks for every opportunity. You know, my brother Vernon, I think I told a little bit of that on Wednesday night. What he would do is if you open that door, he wanted to get in the bathroom. One bathroom, 12 of us, 9, 10, 11 of us, okay, in, in the house. One bathroom. How would you do with that one? And you would rub that, run the tub full of water and thinking, I'm going to get in there. And Vernon, knock on the door and you open. He'd put his foot in so you couldn't shut the door on him. We didn't have locks on doors, Right? And he would just come in and jump in. The, I could have just smoked him. I don't want to get in that dirty water. 
You didn't have a choice. You didn't, your water heater just didn't do what it's supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Anybody ever had that happen? Oh, good Mary, we'll talk about that later. I mean, come on. But the devil wants to get his foot in the door, and if he can get his foot in the door, he's going to come and ramsack. He's going to use that tub, and he's going to dirty it up. We don't want that. Now, he says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, in the Amplified. Now to him who, by in consequence of the action of his power, his power that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far over and above that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams. But then if you look at verse 19, he said in the Amplified that you may really come to know practically oh, through experience for yourself. How do you get experience? By working the word of God, by reading it, and then demonstrating what he says by what you believe. Make sense? Okay. Um, what date was it? Thursday? We were, we were supposed to pour concrete, and um, uh, it, it said it was supposed to, well, it rained in the morning, and then it was supposed to rain at 11 o'clock again. Well, you don't pour concrete in rain. We, we all got that. It wasn't just a little something you could cover. All right. So Kenny, Kenny came home and said, oh, we got this load of concrete coming in. We got to take it, and it's supposed to rain at 11. No problem. I spoke to the rain. See, I gave the words, but God did the work. That's why any one of you can do it. No, it will not rain at 11 o'clock. It will not rain today, and the concrete will get poured, and it will be the best concrete ever. Did it rain at 11 o'clock? Did it rain on Wednesday, Thursday? Excuse me? How about that? Didn't rain at all. Guys, you got to remember, we had a need for it. You don't just go out there and tell it not to rain. Do you have a need? And when you speak to something, what does it have to do? What does it have to do? It has to obey you because when you speak, God does the work. Does it, isn't that awesome? When you speak, God does the work. We don't do the work, you guys. That's why you're going to get so, you're going to get, okay, Lord, that's what your word says. You says practically and thoroughly experience for yourselves the love of Christ. He loves you. He'll do whatever you ask, uh, which far surpasses mere knowledge without, ex without experience, that you may be filled, oh, throughout all all of your being unto all the fullness of God may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. See, the, I, on Thursday mornings when we gals get together, man, the testimonies that these gals come up with, uh, you know, uh, things that happen to their kids or, you know what I'm saying? And you speak it. When we speak, remember, God does the work. And so we don't have to be afraid. You don't let fear come in. Well, it's not the way I want it. Well, you cannot think you're going to bring God down to do it your way. He's already given us a thorough picture of everything that belongs to us. And if we'll do it his way, we'll be in good shape. Does that make sense? It does, doesn't it? So now, the power, it's his power, guys. It's not Pastor Jan's power, it's his power. When I speak, what happens? What happens? What happens? Who takes over when I speak? Who takes over when you speak the word of God? God. Oh, I like that. Okay, let's look at here. In uh, Psalms 45, we were talking about this on Thursday morning. The, I love this. I love this. This is how important we are to God. You know, we're his children. We're so important to him. He, we're, the, we're the apple of his eye. He's got like the eye of a dove, and he's just focused on you because he loves you so much. 
So when you think he doesn't love you, the devil's coming in and he's har harassing you and lying to you. He's a liar from the very beginning. Now he says in Psalms 45, 1, my heart, this is David, my heart overflows with a godly theme. I address my psalm to a king. My tongue is like a pen of a ready writer. Now, Jesus, when Jesus spoke, when he was here, he spoke. He didn't speak about the problem. We come for prayer and we tell about the whole problem. I say, stop. No, what, what are you doing? What are you doing telling about the whole thing? What did Jesus do? He just spoke. What about Lazarus? Lazarus, what? Come forth. come forth. Lazarus, come forth. How many words is that? Two. That's all he did. When people, you know, rise up and walk, the lame man by the pool of Bethesda. Isn't that what he did? See, that is, that is our image. That is what we should look at and we should do. But see, what, what we do, and sometimes I do this too, guys, so I'm not yelling at anybody, but this is me sometimes. Okay, I see something and I pray, and before you know it, I want to get my hands in it because I think I'm supposed to do that. I think, did God tell you to do it? Did God tell you to do it? Well, I think so. No, no. Don't do anything unless you know it's 100% God because the devil will chase you to kingdom come and back. He'll keep you running around, okay? Remember, you've already got it. Andrew won't make the book and the dog is chasing its tail. He'll get you chasing after something that God has already given you that you just have to take it because you believe what he said. And you take it with your words, knowing 100% that he takes over when you speak and he performs. And it will not come back to you void, but it will come to you. It will come to you according to the word of God. You know, I was thinking one time, there's not going to be much to talk about if we're just supposed to watch our words and talk about God. There's so much to talk about in this word I just love it. Look at it, at the miracles. I heard Jerry Savell one time and Kenneth Copeland, they were, they were saying they were on a bike ride, and um, I think Jesse was there, and maybe there was somebody else. And whenever they'd stop, they'd talk about the word. They'd talk about the miracles. They'd just talk about their love for God. They'd get back on their, their motorcycles, and away they'd go. They'd stop, and they'd talk. About then they ran into other motorcycles, cyclists, okay? Is that right? motorcyclists, okay, and, and they got them born again. They were so full that these guys stopped and they just came to them. They were drawn onto the anointing. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Do you understand that? You know, I, I was thinking about this, and I don't remember who told me that, but the story with Kyle, I put that out, and somebody, and I don't know who it was, but they went and told somebody else about it. They spoke the same thing, and the person was brought around. Does anybody, do you remember? Well, anybody, they heard that story. They heard the truth, what happened to Kyle, and they said, well, if she did it, we can do it. Think about this. Where did I see that happen? Through Andrew Womack, and who, what was the girl's name? Does anybody remember Bud and Gina Boop? I had listened to that testimony over and over, and I met her in person when we were there last August. And I said, your eyes aren't crossed. She said, no. And she had to go down steps and up it, steep little old wood steps, you know, and just one little rail. That woman, oh. and when Andrew called her up on stage, she's she, she didn't, she was in a coma. She was, do you understand? They didn't, they, they gave her more than 5% chance to live though. They give Kyle five. You see, 
what a testimony. So here we are in Florida, Kim and I and Tracy, and I'm in our bathroom, and I told you this already. Tracy came in, and she, Mom, can I use this? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so before you know it, I, I just had that, that um, on my DVD player because I just wanted to listen to it again. And I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know how many times I've listened to it. But here she is listening to it with me, right? So when I'm there at the hospital, and I said something about that, and she says, yeah, I remember I saw that in Florida with you. Remember when I was in the bathroom? Do you see what your testimonies do? See, it's God that did that for Gina Boop. It was God who did that for Kyle. It wasn't Pastor Jan. I trusted God because I had seen something. But the, the awesome thing about this is, think about this. They had seen through Andrew Womack, right, the truth, right? And he's, he's a little abrasive. He'll just, he'll just whip it right out. Did he, is he a little abrasive sometimes? He's matter of fact. I like it. Tell me. Tell me. Get it done, right? I don't like pussyfooting around. Just get it done. Well, the truth. So Bud Boop had the truth. And he was always in that word, and she says, Gina says to him, you go, bud, you might have to use that someday. Did you get that? And did she? Did he? He had to use it because she was the one. She couldn't do anything for herself. When you think about that, it's awesome. You speak the word, and God does the work. But how many people has that test? That testimony helped. How many people? But tell me, did that come from the word that came from, that came from this word, didn't it? Okay. They saw what the word said. He said only what the word said, right? He told everybody, uh, uh, Bud Boop, you all saw that testimony. If you didn't look it up, Gina and Bud Boop on, on YouTube. Everybody that came in Watch your words. He put up a pictorial of the pictures of when they walked together. He got pictures of her well. And he said to the nurses, this is who this is. This is not. That's who she is. That's what Jesus, God gave us, a picture of Jesus the way it's supposed to be. Now, isn't that amazing that we've got that? And when you get an imagination, because... But Boop studied the word of God. He got the imagination, the image of God. He got the image of Jesus and what Jesus did. And what is it? If Jesus can do it, I can do it. Isn't that what he tells us? If, look at you, you and you're smiling all the time. That girl, she's, we got to get that testimony on a tape. I'm going to start getting testimonies in play because we have got so many testimonies here. You guys just don't know what we have. But when you use the word of God and you believe the word of God, there isn't anything impossible for God. And he says, if it's not impossible for me, it's not impossible for you. Because where are you seated? Where are you seated? Where are you seated? Where? Where? In heavenly places, in, in Christ Jesus. So do you have everything he has? Can we trust him? Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Where is the first place he wants us to trust him, which is the least to trust? Finances. But why is that the hardest? Because... That's the only place we can give ourselves, and it'll be given unto us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I know that the little Gardner's Creek that runs through our property, we thought it was a ditch, but they called it Gardner's Creek, Creek Creek. But it gets that pond scum in it. You understand? Yeah, that pond scum. Debbie's brother used to say, walk on that pond scum and he'd scum and he'd make comments and jokes about it but we, when a nice rain come along you know what happened to that it washed all that scum out of all that green stuff out of it but the fish 
the little fish would hide, okay, in their little nooches in, in the sides, and they wouldn't get washed down. But all that scum, all that drither and dross would wash out. Isn't that amazing that when we give, we keep it flowing? That's the way he gives. That's the way, that's why when I see somebody in a grocery store and the Holy Spirit says give to them, or I don't care who it is, give. I carry extra money to do that. I love it. Because when you just see, the, you know, the people's face, why are you giving this to me? Because God told me to give it to you, and Jesus loves you. And they watch you as you walk away. I think it's the first time that happened. This was a young couple. I walked through there, and I wanted to see if they were still talking about it. There's no way they could have gotten, on that, gotten around that aisle to go to the front, and they weren't there. I felt like God set them up and had angels come to see what I would do, but to also see the reaction on their faces. When I give that to, to I, did I give it? Well, that one I think I gave to the girl. And she, she just, how many people do that anymore? But the idea is to let it flow, let it flow. And what happens, it keeps the scum and all the junk out of your life. But see, it's not our paycheck that makes us wealthy. It's the giving that makes us wealthy. And we all know that a long time ago, Jesse Duplantis, he was up in Green, or Stevens Point. Oh, it was good. We went up there and he was talking about the flowing and Bill Winston, what does he say, overflow. You know, you look at wealthy people. Our president, Donald J. Trump, before he ran for election, what happened? He's in his limo, right? Billionaire. He's earned it. He's worked hard. He's smart. He works it. But what does he work more than anything? Giving. Do you realize that? Well, they had a flat tire on the limo. The chauffeur didn't know how to change it. A guy across the street that's working a, a construction job comes over and says, can I help you? I don't know. He changed the tire. What did Donald Trump do? He said, go get his name. And they went, and he paid off his house. Another one, this little gal, Kenny, do you remember her name? Oh, beautiful, Miss Wisconsin or Miss, just beautiful. I showed some of you a picture, a picture of her. And when we were down there the first time, I think it was, um, down to when he w had the rally in 2016 in Green Bay, we were right up in front, and all of a sudden people, are, I, I, I turned at one point, and our friend who got us the VIP was up there. Well, you know what VIP is, don't you, Tom? He can get in there. So anyway, they, they were ushering her up in front, you know? And all of a sudden I thought, hmm. And you just step aside. I'm not going to. Do you know what? She planted herself right next to Kenny and I. Donald Trump, long before he ran, found out that she had a disease. She, her and her husband had an eight-year-old son. You know what he did? paid for her doctor bills. He also took care of that eight-year-old boy, which how old is he now if he was eight way back then, paid for his education and college right straight through. This man is, and then this doctor behind us telling stuff that, then another gentleman, he was a shorter, a stockier guy, he's telling us, he says, I know this guy, I've known this guy for years. And he's telling me about, they're telling us about, all the things he has done, but you don't hear about it because he doesn't brag about it, does he? But see, that giving filled up his bank accounts, and he knows it, and he knows it, but he gives it because he loves. Wow. Is God good? So remember, your words are so important to God. The word of God is authentic and genuine. There is a, you can write up any document, and you can call it authentic, okay? Like we make a contract together on something, 
It may be authentic, but how long are we going to stand with that contract? Right? You can break anything, but this here no man can break. No man can break that. But when we start to do it our way, because, you know, I feel this is the way we should do this. No, what if we, what if we just took the word of God and made it first place? Seek the, first the kingdom of God and all these. What if we took this and just believe it and did it? You know, I used to do this more. My mind was so full of how I'm going to make it happen. Isn't that what we do? And when you stop trying to make it happen, you, and all of a sudden it happens, you go, Lord, what took you so long? Well, it wasn't me, honey. It was you. You were holding my hand back because you were busy. Remember my tandem bike? You know what a tandem bike is? You all know what a tandem bike is. When we went to Mackinac Island, we rode a tandem bike. Kenny was on the front. I was on the back. You know what I was doing? What, what do you think I was doing? Just pedaling so hard. What was I doing? My legs were up, and he would think, oh, it's getting kind of hard. I'd put my legs down. <laughs> People go by and they're, look at that. Well, the kids got a kick out of it. He was building his legs. I was doing that for him. <laughs> but that's what we should be. We should be doing that with God. We speak See, he's leading and guiding us, and we speak, right? And he will take us where we're supposed to go. If we trust him, that is the biggest thing. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I trust him. But then the moment that a storm comes along, what happens? Wham, I got to fix this thing. Don't, you don't do that, right? How come I do it? We always think we have to fix it. We want to bring God down to our thinking. That's why I feel so, so much. And, and I, I, the other day, I was ready to leave. I had to go and do some errands, and this car picked up. And they said, it's on your, the door at the church, and said, if we need something, just come to your house. I said, oh, I thought that was to deliver packages, but I didn't say that. Make a long story short, they wanted to get some unkers, and they... You know, they can't get it any place around, but here they found out on the website. So anyway, they came over, and um, she, well, that's good. She said, um, I use it, she said, for arthritis. She said, my arthritis. And it takes the pain right away. And the Lord impressed me, pray over her. I said, can I pray over you? And her husband backs away. Like he's now they go to a to a to a church in the area. Okay? Starts with an L. They go to a church, Lutheran. Okay? She received it. Do you get what I just did? But she received it. Do I have to go back and check on her? Why? Because now it's none of my business because God took over. He has got to fix it. He has got, I believed and she said yes. We got an agreement. If two or more come together in an agreement, whatever, but we're so busy trying to do it our way. Well, now I got to find her. I have to talk to her. Hey, is everything okay? Is, is the pain gone? Well, what did I just do? That isn't what Jesus did. P Peter, John, what did they do? They healed and kept on going. Right? Paul, the same thing. So in Matthew 17, 20, it says, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. You know what, guys? This is what we've got to work on. We've got to work on believing what the Word says. Because what looks impossible to you is what God wants to get you right there. It's like here at the, you're, you're, you're standing on that mountain, you know. How many of you saw this on, on YouTube or one of those where, where they've got these pools or these um, balconies that go out over a cliff and it's glass or plexiglass or whatever. And people, well, how, many, how many have seen pictures of that? How many of you are willing to go out on there? Huh? 
Uh, you would, yeah. You, would. you know what? It was at one time I couldn't even walk across a bridge that would sway. I couldn't go very high. I was too afraid. Fear all over. Then the word came. And when he gave me a scripture, God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, sound mind, self-discipline. What does the love cover? Because who is love? So he covered that fear. Where do I find that scripture? You, uh, you know in Timothy where you can find it. Where, what is it? Second Timothy 1, 7. See, God didn't give you fear, but he gave you his power. And his power is love. He loves, and his love will conquer anything. You know, Keegan, get that, get that song up. We're not going to sing it, but I want to go through those words. Hallelujah. I sing a hallelujah. I was listening to that this morning. Okay. And that, that is so full of scripture. It's so awesome, you guys. When you get in the middle, oh, by the way, after, after Kenny left and I decreed and declared that, you know what I started doing? Praise and worshiping. What did Pastor Kenny and I do on the way to the hospital that hour and a half? Praised and worshiped. Do you feel like doing it? No. But you don't go by feelings. You'll go by the fat. Do you remember Lazarus? Remember Lazarus? Why didn't Jesus go there when they came instead of waiting for two days? <sighs> He's almost dead. Come to my brother. Why? He didn't move by feelings. He could have got into sympathy and said, I got to get there before he dies. He was not moved by sympathy. Symphony. Yeah. He was not moved by emotions. He was only moved by the word of God. And the word of God says, how many days was Lazarus in the tomb? Four days. Four days. Decomposed. Stinketh. He was wrapped in the grave clothes already. And Jesus went there. What words did he say again? Lazarus comes I can't hear you. Okay, let me see if you guys got it. What did he say? Lazarus come forth. No, all of us. Lazarus come forth. What did Lazarus do? The word of God, because Jesus only did what his father told him, showed him to do. How did he do that? Right here. Right here. Jesus had to go through the same things we did. Could Jesus get people born again before he went into the grave and rose? No. Mm -mm. He, did, he did great works. But we're doing greater and mightier works. Okay? So when you take that and you think, I'm scared, what are people going to say if it doesn't work? Isn't that what we do? We're so busy trying to protect our little reputation that stinks in the first place, maybe. Right? No. 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 Kyle's not going to have the pacemaker and that other thing. No. Right? No. Did he have to have it? See, I know that when I speak and I trust God, and he is going to watch over that. He's going to make sure that comes to pass. No. What is the other thing? Pacemaker. And I always forget that other one. A what? A defibrillator. He's only, he just turned 53. Uh-uh, uh-uh. You can do the same thing, guys. Only believe. Isn't that, isn't that what we're supposed to do? But he says, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, start practicing, right? You shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, 
and nothing shall in, be impossible unto you. Can we get that in us? Can we get that in us? Nothing is impossible for you. But remember, you're not doing it. He's doing it. And the moment you speak, or even before you speak something, the devil's going to say, that's not going to happen. Don't even speak it. And he starts putting fear in you. What are people going to think? I really don't care. I really don't care. Oh, for Kyle, it's going to take a long time. Remember, long time. No, it's not. A long time is months and months and months. Ending up in a nursing home. Rehabilitation. He didn't have to do that because the doctors were already talking about that. No, because God was at work because he had. See, we, okay, I'll, I'll talk about I and God are partners. Put your name in there. Tom and God, Didi and Tom, got it? Yeah. We're partners. He says you've got the tool of the words. Yes, thank you. I have got the power. <laughs> Isn't that exciting, you guys? That's when you get some of these kids, and they just grab a hole in prayer. Al, Allie was telling us something about Jaden the other day, and the first thing she did was she started praying in tongues, right? She, this is a kid. What do we do when something happens that we don't like? Whoa, whoa. Isn't that what we do? Pray in tongues. Why? Because you don't know what to say or what to do. So you pray in the Spirit so the Holy Spirit can take over, right? Ask for the interpretations. But now, give me those words, Keegan, up in there. Let's read these words. We're not going to play the song, but raise a hallelujah. Hallelujah, you're praising God. That's the highest level of prayer is when you praise God because Jericho, what happened? What happened on top of those walls? Like a baseball field, chariots on their houses built in that wall. This, hey, baby, that was wider than this here. Wow. How can praise and worship go around? They, were, they must have looked stupid. Seven times around, right? And shut up. Why did he have them shut up? Because their mouth would have destroyed it. What are we doing? Uh, my feet are sore. My sandals are wearing out. God, I got dust all over my clothes. Shut up. Right? And what happened the last day? Who knows what happened the last day? They went around and around. And what happened? What happened? What happened? <sighs> right down. That's what praise and worship does. So in the middle of a storm where things look like, oh, my God, I don't know what to do, God. Oh, God. Start praising and worshiping. So in the presence of my enemies, see, when a storm, that means the enemy. God does not bring a storm. The devil does. Okay, in the presence of my, go on. Oh, you got it. I raise a hallelujah. What are you doing? You're raising a banner that's saying, no, devil, not today. Okay, louder than the unbelief. Why would you sing louder than the unbelief? Because the devil is tormenting your mind. What is that? Yes, yes, yes. So you don't hear those around you. So hear your you're, you're louder than the unbelief because the devil is trying to steal, kill, and he is. When we're on our way again to Milwaukee, praising and worshiping, I tell you, I cranked that old radio up. Just, I had her on high, and we're just... Because when you're praising and worshiping God, and you know what praise and worship does, nothing can stand in its way. Paul and Silas, it created an earthquake, and what happened? 
those weren't jail doors like we have today. I have to get all that stuff one day and show you. That was, that was down in the lower, lower, that was the worst place of all. How could the shackles, now remember, those shackles weren't like little um, handcuffs, okay? Shackles. And those shackles, you know what those shackles would do? It describes that it cut into the skin. So the moment they flinched even, it was cutting in. It was so tight. Those fell off. They fell off because of praise and worship. Did they feel like praising and worship, do you think? No. Mm -mm. Louder than the unbelief. So they must have been singing pretty loud for the other prisoners to hear. Would that be true? Give me the next line. I raise a hallelujah. You're raising a banner over that storm, and you're saying, I have the victory. Our weapon is a melody. Right there is a melody. I, you know, if you sing whatever song you're singing, but watch the words, because remember, your words are going to go inside of you and put doubt or belief. So I raise a hallelujah. You're raising a banner over that saying, devil, not today. Go ahead. Heaven comes to fight for me. Isn't that what happened for Paul and Silas? That's New Testament. It, it, do you get it? Now, you, tell me this, and we'll just hold it right there. At the Last Supper, were they singing? Jesus was singing with his disciples. They were singing. They were singing. They were singing. What Jesus was singing is that I'm going to go through this, and I'm going to come back with the keys of the kingdom. Wow. Think about what he was singing. He knew he was going to go through a terrible storm. He saw it all. He saw it in Psalms 22 that every bone was going to be out of joint. He saw in Isaiah 50, 55. He saw 54. He saw 52. He saw what all was going to happen with his body. But then he also saw where his father was going to leave him, that he wouldn't be connected with the father. Just think, if you had a child, okay, and they were going to go and serve 10 years in another country, and you won't get to see them for 10 years, how would you let them go? That would be a heartache, and it? Would it? What Jesus had to do is he had to trust his father to bring him up out of the pit. Oh, he knew he would. No, no, guys. Mm -mm. He had to trust, just like you and I trust, that God, his daddy, was going to raise him up. You can trust your daddy that he'll raise you up out of any circumstances, any storm, any situation. That's what you got to believe. So forget about yourself. How many of us are all wrapped up in ourselves? I used to be. And shame and guilt and all these things on us. And oh, poor little me. No, no, no. You can't bring heaven down with complaining. You only bring it down with his word and praise and worship. So I'm going to sing. In the middle of the what? Say that with me. I'm going to sing. Amen. That's what, that's what rips the storm apart, guys. Why do we run in every direction to try to figure out what to do? Why don't we just stand still and sing into the storm, and guess who's going to take over? God's going to take over, and when he takes over, let's put it this way, all hell is going to break loose in your life. And the devil's going to try to tell you it's getting worse. And you say, uh-uh. Because you're going to say, no. Jesus sang before he went. Okay? The walls of Jericho sang. Paul sang. What happened? In every situation, they stood still. Yes, Jericho, that was walking around. Now we don't walk around. You can walk around. I don't care. But 
What did Paul do? He only spoke the word. Jesus only spoke the word. He said, be healed. He said to the demon, come out of him. Because he trusted his father was going to make that come to pass. He had to study the same way we have to study. He didn't have that all when he came. Oh, pastor, no, no, no prove it to me. Please prove it to me because it doesn't say that. So now, is anything impossible for God? Nothing is impossible for God. God says we reign as kings. Do you realize that? We, in Romans 5, 17, this is the Amplified. For if because of one man's trespass, and whose is that? One man's trespass, who is it? Adam. Offense, lapse, offense, death reigned through that one much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor, and the free gifts of righteous Free gift. Wow. Boy, if somebody would give me $1,000, that would be the best gift. I would jump around. If they gave me $100, I would... Are you kidding? You got righteousness. That's far better than any moolah. Because you'll go through that 100, you'll go through that 1,000, you'll go through that... This is far, this will get you, and I mean, you'll go any place with this here. Putting them in right standing with himself. Oh, you put us in right standing with yourself. Oh, to raise, raise, reign as kings in life through the man Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Jesus is a sample of what we should be following. Gee, I mess up daily, you guys. You know it. My kids tease me about mess-ups I did way back a long time ago. I don't really care because God doesn't even remember that. But now I can laugh at myself. Oh, my God. So Jesus Christ was the model son. Get it? He was a model to us, and that's why it's saying in there we should look to him. In Romans 5, 1, it says, Therefore, since we are justified, whoa, we're justified? Acquitted, declared righteous, and given a right standing with God through faith, let us grasp the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation to hold onto, onto joy, peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Wow. Is that not what here David and Abraham, Old Testament, they believed that. They were a part of writing that. They didn't have what we have. But see, what we have today is we've got where they've taken and, and watered down the word of God. Do you think it's watered down? Do you think it's watered down? When they're bringing yoga into a church and having yoga classes, do you know how bad yoga is? Does anybody know? It's witchcraft. It starts all time. You know what? When I drank, we were in high school. Oh, yeah. You and your little friends, you know, had a little, little beer here and there. But it started before that. In our own home, when my dad, my mom didn't really drink, my dad. But when I see that, and the party would be over, and Bing and I would go out, and, and any bottle that wasn't empty, we'd drink it. What a picture. And I, I, when I was doing theophostics with myself, I went way back to that. The one that you trust the most. And I followed that. But I can see it today. I can see it today exactly where we were. I, I see it. Just as plain as I see the house we were in, the one on Highway 47, I see it all. But that's not who I am. Bud Boop put that pictorial in Gina Boop's room, and he put pictures of how she was. But also, he was looking forward even better than before, and she is even better than she was before this happened. God will never leave us or forsake us. He's always there. Listen to this in John 14. So we know that, that 
we're kings. God has made us. In Revelations, we're kings, right? Kings and priests, right? Okay. Now, John 14, 10. Believest thou that I am in the Father, this is Jesus, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. What do you think about that? He does the work. But Satan will try to tell you, God is not big enough to do that. Do you know he has no rivals? Remember in that song? He has no rivals. There's nobody higher than the great El Elyon. My, nobody. He is the one that created this, created you. He is the one that made you who you are, a male or a female. If you're a female, you don't change to a male. That ain't way. You're messing with stuff. Now they're giving shots, hormone shots to people. And this guy was on TV, and, and he was saying how it's screwing his whole system up, and it's the biggest lie they ever told. And he said there's, there's so much. Who else saw that? A lot of frustration. You saw that. He was, ju he was just like, it's crazy. And he was trying to warn people, don't do it. But see, what, God, what the devil is after is he's after killing the seed. Killing the seed. He's after that male seed still today. There was more abortions. Is that right? More abortions than, where was that, that statistics? Oh, I, it's not coming right now. But the abortions over the top in America horrible killing if you if you kill the baby in the womb it's okay even the day before it's born but if that baby is born hmm, two three years old and you kill that baby you're going to prison they're calling good evil and evil good right but the church is supposed to have the truth and the day is coming i told you this this is about four years ago three or four years ago that the t no it's even before that there's a time, and it's here now, that you're going to meet people, and they're going to need healing. And you're going to speak in the name of Jesus. You're healed, and keep on walking because it's finished. Then what you're going to do is they're going to be people without a hand, without limbs, and you're going to speak, grow. You're healed in Jesus' name, and they're going to be healed. This is the last days. This is the time. That's why God wants us so much to believe his word and take his word. Do you really care what people think about you? Do you really care? I don't. But God is calling the church out of the closet. Huh? The gays are coming out. They're bragging. No, no. It should be the church coming out. I really, I, I'm not kidding you. I feel so sorry for people that are gay because I know my brother, how miserable he was going from boyfriend to boyfriend, ending up with AIDS and dying the most. I've been in on deaths, but not one like that. that was, I just don't want to even think about it anymore, and I can't help it because I see it in my mind. Horrible. But that's what the devil wants. So when we think about our flesh, give it over to him. Because the flesh does nothing good in John. So now he's telling us in Matthew, my last one here. He said, Matthew 17, 20. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, remember we talked about this a little while ago, grain as a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, what is the mountain? What is the mountain? The problem. The problem. Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible for you. Nothing, nothing, nothing. That's where we got to get to. I know I'm a little over the top sometimes, but not according to God. See, what God loves is when you get to the point, when you're on the end of that branch, 
and there's nothing below to catch you. Hmm? The only one that can help you back is God. That's what he wants. And when you're out there and you start praising and worshiping, what's going to happen? Debbie, you want to come up? We're going to sing and we're going to praise God and we're going to give our offering and our tithes because we want. Do you want multiplication? Well, this is what I'm looking for. Press down, shaken together, running over. Men give into your bosom. Men give into your bosom. You know what's going to happen to you? It happens to me. People give you stuff. People give you money. People like, hey, oh, that wasn't on sale. It's on sale for you. You think I'm kidding? Then you haven't lived the way I'm living because it is fun. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Get a hold of this so you can tell other people about it. Do you understand that? Yeah. Well, let's praise and worship and all the way up just be praising him. Just pre because you know there's a banner over you that's going to bust loose in your finances. Bust loose in your finances in Jesus' name. Let's do it, Debbie. Yes. God said you got to read this to them. Matthew 15, 29 and 30. And Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee and went, went up into the mountain and sat down there. Verse 30. And great multitudes came unto him, having with those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed. What does maimed mean? Maimed. Crippled. Crippled. If your hand is cut off, if your arm is cut off, if your legs are cut off, is that maimed? Yes. Okay. And many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he did what? Healed them. Now, that is what we're supposed to be doing. That is what we're supposed to be doing. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be doing that. I'm just looking. I'm just looking. I'm always out there. Can I pray for somebody? Can I give somebody something? What, what do you want, God? Just think of that. That woman, a man, came to our house the other day, wanted a tub of the unkers. I said, why don't you follow me over there and I'll get it for you? Oh, okay. They, ca they came over here. We're in the bookstore, right? God says, pray over her. She needed to get prayer. I gave her one of our cards. I don't know what God's all going to do with that. I don't know. But I know God is on the move, and I know he brought me over here for a purpose. And I had something else I was going to do, too, because that now that took up about a half an hour of my time, so I couldn't do something that I really wanted to do. But what is the most important thing? The Word of God. The Word of God. God will bless me and all the rest of that stuff. You know, i got to put the selfishness aside. You think? Yeah. So let's do communion. God is good. God is good. Oh, I love him. I love him. I love him. God is on the move. I like that song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you're going through something in your life, start praising and worshiping God. Start praising and worshiping God. And if you're going through it and you're going over and over and over and through it and through it and through it, you're doing something wrong. Look at it. What are you doing wrong? If you're married, ask your wife. Ask your husband. What, what do you think I'm doing wrong? But you be, be ready because you might hear something you don't like. Do you understand that? Hmm? Yeah. Or go to somebody who's going to be honest with you. They might tell you something you don't like. Do you know what? Do you know why people don't want to go to churches? Because hmm? they don't want to hear the truth if the truth is being preached. But if I can stay home and flip through channels, and I don't like what you're saying, I can flip you off. I meant the channel. <laughs> I know some of you. 
but I, I just turn on somebody else. But, but, you know, like Andrew Womack, when I first started watching him about three years ago, I was like, ooh. And the Lord said, don't you change that. Okay. It was, it was for me. It was for me. And I praise God. I sat there, and I, I said, Lord, that's me. I know it. Help me. Thank God was nobody was around. He gave me that opportunity to get rid of that so that I'm more free. How many of you are tied up in a box? How many of you are all tied up and you're really not happy and really not having fun? Then you better get before the Lord and ask him to help you. Get rid of all the trash. Hmm? I'll come and live in your house with you for a week and I'll just give me an hour and I'll tell you what's going on because the Holy Spirit will tell, and the discernment will take over. It's discernment. Kenny and I were talking about that yesterday morning, and he says, you know, Jan, you have to discern. I said, that's right. We have to discern. And when you discern something you're doing, and it's make somebody else unhappy, whoo, why? If it's the truth of what you're doing, and it's according to the Word of God, then do it. If it's not, that's your opportunity to change isn't that wonderful? He does that for me all the time. So, his body was broken for us. His body was broken. His spirit man went into hell. Oh. And he suffered and died for us. And he came up and he gave us the free gift of righteousness. He justified of us. Then he gave us his faith when we asked him into our heart. And now he said, you're seated in heavenly places in me. Take my word and go and be doers of the word, not hearers alone. That's what we do. People will want to know, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What God told me to do. I believe it. It's off the wall, I know, but I'm going to do it. Hmm? Right? Right? When some people at the hospital were saying some things, they'd come to visit. Tracy at one time said, Mom, would you go down in the waiting room and tell nobody to come in today? No problem. Somebody came and they said something. I said, no, he's doing great. He'll be just fine. He's doing that good? Oh, yeah, I said. No, he wasn't, according to the world. But by the time I got back in there, it wasn't two hours later, he was doing great again. You see, it, it, now I know why, because that person could have been a great influence on Tracy. Kyle couldn't hear. He was no, no oxygen, just, you know, on... Do they do that all the time, Dixie? Just put them on oxygen, no, no breathing on their own? Do they breathe? Yeah. Because he would, they, when that nurse said, he's not breathing on his own at all, we're doing it for him. Just keeping it going until, yeah, I said until he wakes up, until he comes out of here. Guys, do you see what we have? Why don't we take it by faith? Why don't we just believe what the word says? Why don't we just do it? People think you're crazy anyway. Right? You're, they think you're in a cult anyway, don't they, Dee? But look at you now. I bet you can dance, too. We'll get that going, too. God is good. Let's break it and let's eat it because we're partying with our Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. Oh, God, I thank you. Pierced for my transgression, crushed for my iniquities, a chastisement that bought me peace was upon Christ. And by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed and made whole by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. And as we raise up, symbolizing his blood, and as we drink, we are partakers, meaning that we partake of the miracles. We speak, that's our tool. He does the work and he's already finished the work. Let's drink. God is good. All the time. Do you have another song for us? 
well, let's do a raise the holla, do it. Let's do it because you got anything going on inside of your world, anything. You start raising a banner over it, hallelujah, and watch it break. Do you understand that? As you walk out and as the day goes on, you'll go, oh, that really works. Let's do it, Debbie. And you said, I win because Jesus won. Amen. There isn't anything impossible for God. Well, there's nothing impossible for you. You carry the blessings, the anointing in you. Now speak the word and he'll fulfill it. Now, Father, I agree together in prayer right now. Give me these here. People heard the word and some people still doubt. Well, that's okay. Because God is going to overrun people. Just like that water, the water's crashing over our tithes and offering. The water crashes over us. Crashes over, that means the love of God that symbolizes water is Jesus, the cleansing. That crashes over us, meaning his word is chasing you down, and he's going to just release those blessings, but he has to wait for you to say, I receive. Do you receive his blessings? Receive it. Then it is finished in Jesus' name. I bless you, and you have an 